Hi, it's Leszek Stamachowski, and thank you so much for joining us on Fitness Soul Podcast. On this week's show, we are here with Evan Oliphant, a professional cyclist. Among other things, uh, you are going to learn what it takes to be athlete. Uh, how to fuel yourself during long runs, what to do to speed up your recovery time, and much, much more. To make Evan a little bit more comfortable, um, we've decided to record while we're on the rollers. Rollers, for those who don't know, it's a ingenious little thing that allows you to ride your bike indoor. You simply put your bike on the top of them and start pedaling. It was piece of cake for Evan, uh, but I found it very, very difficult. He had a great fun. Sorry in advance for my heavy breathing and some of the noises. Let's hang out with Evan. I'm Evan Oliphant. I'm a professional rider with Team Raleigh GAC. I've been a multiple Scottish champion, I've represented Great Britain at European World Champs, I've been to three Commonwealth Games, and uh, at the moment I'm currently in my off-season, so I just finished Tour of Britain two weeks ago. Do you still consider this as a hobby or is it like a job for you only? Uh, a bit of both really. I, when I go out with the local clubs, it, it feels a bit more like a hobby, uh -huh. but then I still have to do the hard training on my own in between and then when you're a turbo trainer doing hard sessions killing yourself then it's like a job and if you're going out in horrible weather it's not as enjoyable to training than that but you know you're doing that so you can win the races and, and that's some more enjoyable bits oh yeah yeah so you know for for me I, I cycle from time to time uh nothing big but you know when the weather is crap i'm not going out this is it it's just if it's raining and if I if I've been caught up by the rain, it's fine. I can I can do it. But going out in the rain, it's it's no. Yeah. Oh, it's for you. Well, I'm a bit a bit similar really. Now I've got like a turbo trainer and rollers. I can train indoors if the weather's horrible. Or I go to the track in Glasgow in the velodrome. Uh huh. But um, again, if I'm out, I get caught in the rain. It's not quite as bad as leaving the house in the rain and cold. Oh I mean, shit! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really interested. How you how you fuel? Yeah. What you do before? When it starts? So let's say you've got race on Saturday. Okay. What you do? Is uh, it like you starting on Thursday or? A most, well, most of the races are Sunday, so we'll go for okay. Sunday. So all the time you're eating healthy through the week as well. And I'll normally have raced on a Sunday before. Uh -huh. So Monday will be a recovery day and get them trying to top back up from what I use Sunday. And I'll be training hard again for the Tuesday Thursdays. Uh -huh. So those days I'll have more carbs because you need you need to refuel. For, and after after them sessions I'll have protein recovery drink. The first thing I'll have when I come in. Uh -huh. So sometimes if I'm organised I'll have that made up before I go out. <laughs> so as soon as I get in I can have it well, before I go in the shower. Yeah. If not I'm rushing around doing it. And then I'll have a shower. And then within 30 minutes I'll try to have a meal depending. Normally I'm training in the morning so it'll be lunch. So I'll have something like scrambled eggs and toast and maybe a yogurt uh -huh. and some or a soup and sandwich it's just normal food but I've, I've had a protein drink before that then I'll have some fruit or something in the afternoon as a snack and then a normal dinner would be well, well last night I had spaghetti bolognese with spaghetti uh -huh. I'll have vegetables in that or I'll have rice and chicken with some veg just normal stuff but healthy so I'll have that every week and then Saturday before the race, I'm normally traveling as well. Mm -hmm. It's a bit different. I'll have my breakfast. I normally always have porridge with banana and honey. And a coffee, that's my normal normal thing. And if I'm going out training, probably have toast as well before I go. So I still have the same breakfast on Saturday, even though I'm not going to be riding as much. Mm -hmm. I'll try, I'll travel and then maybe do an hour really easy on the bike, like listener. And then uh, when I get back from the ride, probably massage, then that night I'll try to, nor I normally have rice rather than pasta because I find that pasta sits in your stomach a lot, so I'll have rice with chicken and veg, but 
more, a bigger portion than I would have had normally during the week. Do you do count calories? Is it important or just eat nah, whatever just eat you feel? For, for, especially when you're at a stage race. So, when I was at Tour of Britain the other week, eight days, uh -huh. you can't really get enough, cut, enough in, really. Right. You're eating on the bike as soon as you finish, at night in the hotel, breakfast, packing in as much as you can. And we have cakes and everything at night at Tour of Britain. So how, how many calories do you, do you think you burn? Like, uh, is it like easy. Easy 7,000 a day on the bike. 7,000? Yeah. Wow. Up to, like, up to 7,000 easy. On, you're out for 140 miles, so. Uh -huh. But we're eating, I'm having like energy bars and gels a bit during the race and uh, carbohydrate drinks. So how the, what's the way? So when you start in the race, you start eating from the very, very beginning or you're just waiting until you're hungry or? No, from within, after 30 minutes. So I'll have, I'll have my breakfast three hours before the race. Uh -huh. Then I won't eat again until the race starts. And then I'll have within 30 minutes. Depend if you can, if the race is going to be hard, you can't eat, but I'll try to eat after 30 minutes and I'll just keep eating right through the race. Uh -huh. I'll, have, I'll keep the energy gels towards the end of the race. And I'll try to eat normal solids before that, especially if it's a long stage race, because every day having them, it's a, yeah. you want to change as well. But Tour of Britain, we have sandwiches and it's a waffle, uh -huh. cakes, or malt loaf, have all those things as well. And halfway through the race stage, you get um, a musette bag. So, we have a helper from the team. They hand up a bag to you from the side of the road. Uh -huh. you catch that, and there you have two water bottles, some energy bars, and some little cakes and sandwiches. So, that's like a treat halfway through, wondering what you're going to get. <laughs> always something different in each day to surprise us. Oh, fantastic. And then, what's happened? You finished the race? So, I finished the race. And, um, Again, we have the, the helper, they'll have the recovery drink. We have that camper van, so they have them all set up in the back. Normally, the first thing I have after a race is a can of Coke, though. You know, just something refreshing or some sort of fizzy goods with some sugars. To, that's the first thing I have, and then I'll have my protein recovery drink when I get back to the camper van. Mm -hmm. and there we'll have a food to Britain. We had rice made with some tuna and veg mixed in, or some couscous each day. Mm -hmm. So we have that on the way to the hotel. Then once we get to hotel, we have a shower, have a massage, and then down for dinner again and get, get as much in as you can. <laughs> and so, do you sleep or you do some some stretching? Or uh, no, I don't, during the race, I don't tend to stretch that much. That's uh, more because you're too tired. But and you've had a massage, it's not. Sometimes you can't get a massage if like, you travel really late. Uh -huh. it's better to go to sleep. So I'll maybe do a few stretches then before bed, but. I don't, I'm quite flexible normally, so I don't really suffer. I never find you need to stretch really, it doesn't seem to help me any. Okay. But I know it's, like some, of the guys, some of the guys in my team have problems with the backs or hamstrings, and they, they, they definitely stretch because it helps oh, them for sure. Okay. Have you been racing for how long now? Uh, well, I started, when I finished university in 2004, I went to the World Champs and stuff with Great Britain team, but I wasn't. I still time on the bike then, I was still at university, but since 2005, I've been doing it full time. So it's like 10 years, and the question is about the longevity. What's your tricks? Like, how are you doing this, that you can be on the top of your game, you know, for, for 10 years? Yeah, well, I started road racing, and doing these 100 mile road races quite late. I was like 22, 23, but a lot of the guys that I raced with were doing it since they were youth and junior, so mm -hmm. they were road racing a lot. When they're like younger than me, so I think I did a lot of track racing on the grass and everything to begin with. So it was only short racing, so I don't think it was carrying me as much. And uh, then it was something different when I changed to road racing. Uh -huh. I've been doing that since the last 10 years, really, 11 years road racing. But as long as you look after yourself, and I think eating healthy is one of the most crucial things to being able to carry on doing it. That like I, when I'm, I try to eat healthy all the time, really. And, I have uh -huh. a bit in the off season where you get a few beers and stuff doesn't do any harm, but like definitely I think that's what helps you go and you rest properly after training and doing the correct training as well also helps. Oh yeah. If you're out slogging away for five, six hours every day, you may you're doing loads of miles but a lot of it's just jump miles and you're not getting anything from it except for uh -huh. tiring yourself out. So I probably did that more Years ago, I probably used to do a lot more of that, but now I kind of know what works for me. I stick to that, and 
I'll probably be less out of my mic now than I used to. Okay. But and you are better in it. Yeah, I'm better now, but because I know what works. Over all that time, you learn what works for you, so uh -huh. I'm just stick to doing that. Wow. So you still, do you, how you can measure whatever you're getting better or not? Do you got like time charts or something? And yeah, well, I've got a power meter as well. So I've got the power cranks. Uh -huh. So that gives you an instant how hard you're pushing on the pedals. So you can monitor over a time, like 30 seconds. Well, you can do instant one second up to an hour your different power zones. So depending on what training I've been doing, it changes a bit. Mm -hmm. But overall, the, you can tell for a certain heart rate if you you can write if you lower heart rate for the same power you used to do two months ago, then you're, you can see big improvements. Which is good. Okay. But, uh, you can have a monitor, like, and then there's graphs. You, plot, you download it all, and there's software that you can view it so you can see over time what your weaknesses are, or so you know where you need to work on as well. So that's definitely helped us. Uh -huh. And certainly that's come into cycling a lot. When I first started, there wasn't that many people with power meters, and now nearly everyone that races has them. That's helped a lot for it. People for training and for planning, yeah. So how do you do? Do you use the heart rate monitors as well? Uh, or? I'll use. I have the heart rate alongside the power, but I use the power more than the heart rate for sure because power is more instant. Heart rate takes it's quite a delay. Like I could start going really hard here just now, and it would take a lot of bit from heart rate to go. But if I did it, the power would be instant. Okay. So it's more it's more an instant thing with the power than the heart rate. Heart rate is Your like weight when you when you. When, when you I'm compete, yeah, not uh, off-season, but... 65, 65 kilos, really. Uh -huh. But I do sometimes drop below that, but I notice I lose some power then. I can climb really well, but I don't have the same power in the flat. So anything between 65 and 66 is I... This is for me. I don't really go up that much in off-season because I do more longer miles in the off-season. Uh -huh. so that kind of keeps the weight down, and I also ride the track in the winter. So. If anything, I gain a bit of muscle from the track. That's the only way that my weight goes up. It's okay. not really from fat, it's more from the muscle gain. From the muscle gain, yeah. Do you do any other training than, than bike? Uh, well, in the winter, again, I go to the gym. So the days I go to Glasgow, the track, I do gym session in the morning, say, I think Tuesday or Thursday is this winter. So uh -huh. I'll start going a couple of weeks' time. And I'll do a track session in the afternoon after doing the gym, then three weights. He went in the morning with it. And what you guys do? Uh, a bit of like squatting. A lot of stuff's kind of stretch exercise as well with the weights. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like strength up the hamstrings, glutes. Squatting was the main one we were doing, like front and back squats, deadlifts. It's all we're all rounder to give you a bit more strength. Uh huh. Do you, so do you go like for more like more reps or less reps and heavier? Less reps and heavier. Yeah. So, yeah, and like, do you think do you think it's helping? Or? Yeah, definitely. It definitely helps when for sprinting on the bike. I noticed the winters I have done it, I feel stronger on the bike, but again, I, you gain a bit of weight, a bit, a bit, a bit more mass from, so it affects climbing slightly. So it's just... So it's a balance of, depending on what racing you're doing, uh -huh. I mean, you can change your weights, I guess. It's a, you probably do more reps and lower weights and then you find it climbing. Yeah. So okay. When the last time I was in the gym, I was training with the track for the normal game, so having a bit of extra muscle and, Carrying a half kilo more wasn't a problem because it tracked flat. Uh huh. <laughs> so you better having the power. <laughs> what do you, is it, uh, what do you prefer? Is it track or, or road? Uh, no, nah, definitely. Road racing is much, uh, it's much better for you to get travel around the track. I like doing the track every now and again, but just around the track and not do the roads. I don't think I'd be able to do that for 11 years. <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck inside and. Like it's good. I, I'm more into doing winter more than anything. Uh -huh. It's good. You get a good effort, like training sessions, and you're out in the horrible weather. I enjoy racing. I don't like track training. I enjoy the racing on the track, but not not the training. Not the training. So. <sighs> it's different from. So if I did uh, some other exercise I wasn't used to doing, then I'd do uh -huh. that. Even walking kills me. <laughs> this, this is this is hard, and especially. The, the one thing, it, it's warm, yeah. because when you go outside, you've got the wind and yeah. stuff, and here you are like stuck in one yeah, well, place. I have a turbo trainer, I have a fan. Okay. I use a fan and put it in the So this is what we're missing here, yeah. we should have a fan. <laughs> <laughs> right, like when I, uh, before the Delhi Commonwealth Games, uh -huh. I trained in a heat chamber at Napier University. Right. Uh, 
I mean, what, like 35 degrees and the humidity was all changed to what it was going to be like in Delhi. So we had these, uh -huh. we were just like sweating, we had a tablet, so we're taking the, the thermometer over heat. Uh -huh. so, okay. You know, we had it all, like, it was really advanced for actually what the Sports Scotland were doing and all that. Mm -hmm. then, I don't know if it helped we got there or not, but I did good in the time trial when it was 45 degrees. It was 45 in the time 40. trial. Okay. <laughs> it was like riding in my hair dryer. Then. <laughs> <laughs> and you got them all with one helmet on with visors and everything. So there's, n there's no any wind yeah. there? And yeah, it was, it was so hot. So I started uh, like when I warmed up and everyone had an ice vest on, we were in this tent. So I had an ice vest to keep my core temperature down and I started, I started with rubber elated gloves, got holes in them, we ice packed them in the back. Uh -huh. So they were gradually melting and because I was trying to keep it. The more you can keep your core temperature down for as long as possible. Was that, that's yeah, better yeah, for so, you in the long yeah, shot. So I got like probably halfway and I was still still felt okay and then I started struggling with my back. But like, I was leading, I hadn't really done any time trial in all year and I was leading, I ended up living still, which was good for me because I don't really do many time trials and okay. I hadn't been on a time trial all year. <laughs> and loads of guys that I'd expect to beat like, that beat me normally in time trials, they were all behind you and because of heat and they weren't beating me. So. I mean, this is the place for you to. Well, yeah, well, every time I've been in Australia, I've done well in racing, too. Uh -huh. so it's so how it's happened that you are in Scotland yeah, then? Well, I'm, I'm from the north. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like you're from the coldest place on earth. Yeah, and you enjoy well, the warm. Yeah. I think when you're really lean, you get better in the heat as well, because you can handle it. Yeah. I'm yeah. my veins sticking out, but they're too cold just now. They're not uh, a little bit. No, but you can, you can see them. But when I'm hot, they're like really bad. So this the, has the question. That's what he was laughing about. Yeah. <laughs> he was always laughing when I come in, and uh, it was when you can see them on my stomach. You know, some really, when I come back from a stage race, you can see veins across my back. Oh, sure. <laughs> there's probably a bit of dehydration as well, which causes that. For the oh yeah, right. What about? Uh, so you've been you've been cycling for ten years, eleven years. You have you have a lot of experience, yeah, and. Is it anything like, if someone starts, someone is now 20 years is of age and wants to pick up and wants to be a cyclist like you, professional cyclist, what do you would tell to him? Uh, probably the first thing is to do every discipline, not, don't just come and do road racing, you need to do a bit of like criteriums, track, because uh -huh. doing everything together gives you a better base with it too, and you'll find out what you're best at as well, but doing like, because criteria, everything complements each other really, so if mm -hmm. you start like doing the criteria of the one hour race flat out, but that also helps you when you go back to the road because there's corners in the road races and spinning mm -hmm. at the corners. So you find that easier then. And then also doing time trialing, so you get used to on your own doing 30 minute hour efforts. If you're in a breakaway, then the road race on your own, and that's a case of getting it helps. It's everything. You get a lot of young guys just think, oh, I can't time trial, I can't ride for you. They just stick to one thing. Uh -huh. But then in a situation, when you get in a situation in a road race where you're on your own or uh -huh. there's loads of corners and then because it's not been doing it at the start, but they struggle with that. But that's probably one of the main things when you first start, do a bit of everything. Even do a bit of balance. mountain biking, you have your good bike handling. Okay. Or cross bike, like that's uh -huh. where your bike handling. So everything, doing a bit of everything really. And then again, having, having the right nutrition and doing the right training then is the other and then, thing. Is it, is, it, is it really important to sign up to the club or you can do this on your uh, own? No, you can do, it definitely helps going with a club, going out and ride with people that are experienced guys, they teach, you can learn a lot of things quickly. You can do a lot of training, I do a lot of training on my own, but you need, you need to ride with other people to get learn the skills really. Go ahead. You can't, you can't expect to turn up a road race in a grip <laughs> and never ridden in a grip before him do well. Yeah. You just, because you wouldn't know exactly. Because a lot, you can save so much energy by sitting in the right place in the grip, okay. making your attack at the right time. You just sit in the front all day, everyone just take advantage. Uh -huh. Like I see guys that do that. And, and like, I've been in races where I've definitely not been the strongest and I've won just from knowing where to sit and when to attack. You wait till there's, Tired when they've used everything up, and then, then you go. So is, what kind of rider you are? You are more like a sprinter, or more like getting people tired, or uh, what, what you do? Mostly? I'm a bit of all rounder. Really. I can climb, not like big mountain climbs, but like climb the climbs in Britain. None of them are massive. So I can get over all them really with the front guys. And I can't. I couldn't win a sprint from the hundred man guys with the best sprinters mm -hmm. there. But if there's been a few hills and a lot of sprinters have been dropped on the climbs. And so maybe a group of 10 coming in the finish, then, then that's a good, your good chance. chance. Yeah, it's, it's, but it, ha it, it depends on a lot of it's got like teammates. It depends what happens with, if you've got two or three guys from your team in a group of 10, uh -huh. then you start attacking. And 
uh, either one of these could win, really. It's not. It just becomes it becomes a numbers really. You come see everyone starts stacking until you know, two or three left, and then you go from there mm -hmm. really. But or if you know you're not the strongest guy in the team on that particular day, then you'll do all the work for the for the other for guys. Other guys yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, it becomes really tactical, especially towards the end when you, you check who else is there and you tend to know what other guys can do. And uh -huh. if you think you can't win, then at the end in the group, if you think you can't win a sprint, then you have to try something else. You get a gamble on attack and. They might be hesitant to chase uh -huh. if it's too early, that they were trying to let someone else do it. And it's an absolute payoff loads of time when people have so paid off from that, I've done it before too. Okay. So. Yeah. So what's, what's your favourite race in Britain or in the world? Um, I've always liked racing in Australia. I've done quite a few races out there, partly because the weather's always nice. And uh, I've raced in Malaysia, actually, Kuala and Cali. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was a really nice race. I liked that race. It was a big crowd to it every day as well. And, um, even Tour of Britain, it's like, for me, it's like my local local race, and everyone comes out to support. And it's get I've done it. That was my ninth Tour of Britain there, just the other week. And it's getting longer every year and harder and longer stages. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> but like, it's, it's becoming more achievement to get through it because it's it's becoming like when I first started, I think it was four days, and one of them was a four k time trial and a criterium. So it's only really two two proper road stages. So. Now it's eight days, of nice. 140 mile days. So yeah. <laughs> it's definitely got harder, but yeah. And um, a lot, there's a race down Lincoln that I like. You go up to mm -hmm. the town centre every year. So it's, it's a hundred mile race, and you do 13 times up this cobble climb. So it's a 1k cobble climb every lap. So oh. That's a. In fact, it was the British Championships last year, and then every year it's the one around the elite Premier College there in British mm -hmm. Series. So I really enjoy that race every year. That and then there's a new one that we've run the last few years as well called Cycle Classic. Okay. It's down in Melton Mowbray. Uh -huh. So it's like a road race but with uh, off road sections on it. And they're off? through fields and. So how, are you doing this on the same on bike? The same or? Bike, yeah, we just have slightly bigger tyres on and maybe put slime in them to uh -huh. stop punctures. But you do, lots of people still puncture. It's a bit of luck if you don't puncture, but we have team cars behind so you can get service. But yeah, it's like. I like that race because it's something, something different, I think, when I've been doing it so long, something so it's different is good, yeah. So when I raced, I raced in Belgium one year, I did a couple of races in France at Gatso, where they had mm -hmm. off-road sectors. So. Oh. so what's the future for you? Is it like, how long are you going to keep it up? Because the other guys behind you, they probably like, Evan, just go away, <laughs> we want to win something. Well, I'm, uh, <laughs> I've got a guy on my team who's 39. Right. So I'm only 33, so if I can keep so going as long as him, I've got another <laughs> six, seven years. But I'd like to, I still want to get a Commonwealth Games medal. So I'm, 